power and control. They can get people to buy certain goods and products and services. They can get people to think about different things and they can lead the conversation down different ways. And traditionally, I think we've probably always seen our, our big influences in the past, the likes of a, an Eddie Maguire, a John Laws and, and a Ray Martin. They've always been the heavy influences of the past, but there's a new breed coming through and, uh, and it's probably uh, heading towards a more female orientated breed coming through. And many a lady will listening right now will say, and not before time. But it has taken a bit of time, and I, and I always I get asked the question a lot, why aren't there more women, more ladies in talkback radio? And uh, yeah, Interesting the, point, there's hardly any. There is hardly any. I mean, you'll have a few that are, are maybe a guest of, or they might be also to a co-presenter, but females do not dominate talkback radio. But television, they're gorgeous for. They work very well. And uh, newspapers, without any doubt, some of our best journalists in the country are female. But in talkback radio, they're not. And it's a very male-dominated area. And some tend to say, and this is, this is the, the feedback that I've been given in the past, is that the, the reason is that females tend to be far more critical of other females. And for a female to have an opinion and a point of view for which a, a, a talkback presenter must have, females, again, can get very highly critical of those with opinions. So it's, uh, that's an observation that's been made. It's not down by law by any means, but it's, mm. uh, it's something that has been noted, uh, not just in any particular state, but right around the country. Yes, true. I think in at the ABC, they're probably more female hosting... Uh, talk radio and and uh, television such programs than there would be in the commercial world of media. It would be the ABC doesn't, and they, they'll tend to dominate to the afternoon programs, the the, the programs that are probably a little less editorial mm. and probably a little bit more entertaining. But that's not to dismiss. I mean, there's some fantastic female uh, radio presenters around the country, but. In the commercial networks, it's, uh, it's very difficult for them to, uh, to really make uh, a big play of it. And uh, it's interesting because uh, at the end of the day, the female uh, broadcaster or presenter or journalist is just as influential as a male, but in radio it's a little different. Yes, and it's funny because I always enjoy listening to a, a female on air. I really do. I'm not just saying it to be politically correct. I think it's uh, a female voice and the female perspective... Uh, is is interesting. I think we're going to see a change in the future. I just think at this point it, it's it's just been a long time where it's been a heavily male dominated area. But um, again, it's that whole issue that uh, females tend to be far more critical. They're far more critical when it comes to fashion, when it comes to all the presentation, etc. And uh, and when you have an opinion, uh, it also tends to be a bit of an issue. But uh, might have opened up Pandora's box there, Andrew. We might get a few uh, thoughts and views from the, the listeners tonight. Yeah, that's interesting. I might open the lines after this. Uh, Likeable personalities, very important, obviously, uh, to be uh, accepted in people's homes and through their radios. Uh, and that is a big thing. What are some of the other, what you see as the uh, sort of parameters of, of someone being a success in the media? Oh, look, they've, they've just got to have, they've got to have presence. Uh, as you said, yes, likeable personalities. They've got to be engaging uh, and larger than life. It's, uh, it's such an important part of the way someone influences and, and they are um, moving within their medium. They've also got to have good publicity agents and they've also got to have good advisors. Uh, you know, you've got Mark mm -hmm. sitting right next to you doing exactly what you do and you two do it so well together. You're the most dominating influencers in the 12 to 5.30 time slot. <laughs> <laughs> they, oh, Nick, you are very kind. Yes. Well, I think that'll get me back for next week. Um, yes. But I can tell you, that is, it's important to have a good team. And that's, that's really, I, I hit that home so much. The, 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 for every good presenter out there, there is an even better producer. And, uh, and that's an important part of any media. And that goes across to print media as well. Um, there's assistants, there's people in there that work hard behind the scenes to, to bring uh, stories together as, it, as they do in television more so particularly. But it, it is important to have good agents, good advisors, to become those uh, people that can actually influence the way we do things. Yeah. 
some of the big influences I wanted to have a chat to you about, Andrew, because I don't think they're necessarily the names that would probably pop up, as we mentioned earlier, like the, the Ray Martins of the world. It's, uh, it's, it's, we're going into a very different world now where it's younger people coming up through the ranks and they are having quite an influence in the way that we talk about things and the way that we look at things. I've mentioned Charlie Pickering's name a few times over the last 18 months. And I think he's one of the great influences when it comes to discussing political or intelligent conversation. The way he does it on Channel 10 is the project. It really is quite amazing. And he's very well supported by his co-star, co-stars there in Carrie Bickmore and Dave Hughes. They, they just bring yeah, it very good. nicely together. Yeah. Charlie Pickering's got a law background, I think, hasn't he, from memory? He does indeed. Dave Hughes is the comedian. And Carrie... Carrie was one of those, um, look, amazing stories coming through the ranks of Channel 10, uh, a very sad uh, uh, passing of her husband, and the way that she deals with topics and, and discussions, she's now being nominated for the Gold Logie every year now. So yes, I know. She's she a out, very out, popular character. That's right, out of uh, West Australia, I think. Correct, good yeah. West Australian girl, and uh, making it big, as do a lot of good West Australians, but... Uh, you know, that they are, that she just does an, an amazing job and uh, quite frankly is pretty much, th- those three are the, really the king and queens of, uh, of Channel 10. Yes, they are. Uh, now to the ABC. To the ABC. The, the, uh, our four BC listeners there will probably remember young Lee Sales coming through the ranks of Channel 9. Um, a, a, a fantastic young journalist coming through, uh, then moved over to the ABC and uh, had a couple of gigs there, or a couple of, for a while at the at Late Line, and then uh, when Kerry O'Brien decided to hang up the boots, uh, Lee Sales, whether there was a, there was big questions of who was going to take over the 7:30 uh, program, and uh, and when Lee came up, some were probably questioning whether it was right to have uh, a female at that uh, at the helm there. And, uh, but they were not wrong Abe, at the ABC. They got it right. The mix has been great, and she's done an outstanding job for yes. the 7.30 And program. can be very, very good and uh, forensic uh, questioner to interview her, can't she? Doesn't let go. She is just... She knows where to, uh, to take it. She'll, go, she'll take it right to the very end and then uh, and obviously finish off whoever she is interviewing, P- particularly for the, pol- the politicians. Politicians probably, uh, you know, they, they thought they got a, a bit of reprieve when they saw Kerry O'Brien disappear, but uh, Lee has not uh, <laughs> let go of the noose there. She is right on top of it. Who's next on your list? Look, Tracy, uh, I've got Tracy Grimshaw for Channel 9, and the reason I, I, I think Tracy's probably in, in the little bit older audience there, she's, she's getting on to be in the sort of the mid-50s. I won't name her, her, I won't actually date her because it's not fair, but um, look, uh, she, Tracy's just got this incredible appeal uh, right across the country, and, and that, that's probably what comes under being a, a huge influence. Is it's also your audience and where you're actually placed. Eddie Maguire was always fantastic because he was in national programs, he could be seen. He also does his uh, radio programs, but uh, Tracy's got a very, very high visible position in at a current affair, and uh, and she's had an amazing career. She's almost been at uh, the head of a current affair now for over ten years since Ray Martin uh, moved on, and uh, she's been doing a great job. But Tracy is very, very influential, and when anyone has a pot shot at Tracy Grimshaw, the rest of the country finds out about it. Yes, true. And uh, to the ABC again for uh, another on your list this time. Tony Jones from Q&A. Yeah. You either love him or hate him. He's a, he's a bit of a polariser, isn't he, I think? Oh, he's this, this. I, I, I'm denied about putting Tony into this uh, list, and, and when I was surveying people around, I, Tony Jones came up. Uh, the Q&A program, I think, is, is probably one of the most engaging. They've, they've engaged social media at another level, and uh, they get incredible response. Um, but Tony Jones has uh, taken this program and made it his own. He really has. And the kind of people that he has coming through the program would have to place him as one of the highest influences in the country. I mean, you know, there's been cases there where he's put questions to the ex-Prime Minister, Julia, Julia Gillard, uh, questions from Assange, Julian Assange, where he's actually questioned uh, the Prime Minister for, for treason. And also to, you know, he's also questioned about her, Julia Gillard's uh, emotional address at the US Congress. There's a lot of little things that he can do, and he's got all the key people from around the country coming onto his little program, and he engages a studio audience, also to an online audience through Twitter. 
it's incredibly powerful. Um, but there's a little bit of the, you either love him or hate him, uh, Mr. Tony Jones. And uh, <laughs> yes. you have to say, if anything, he's very, very influential. And this guy is Mr. Sport, isn't he? Oh, Bruce McAvaney. He's special. He's special, this boy. Um, what's the other one? Delicious. <laughs> uh, Bruce McAvaney. I mean, look, he is, uh, he's only, he's 60 years young. He's, uh, oh. he's, a, he's a gorgeous man and uh, he really does and has delivered uh, some of the biggest sporting events from around the world to our little television sets, particularly when it comes to the Olympic Games and uh, also to the big events like the AFL, etc. He's, he's always there. Um, he's amazing for Channel 7. He's never really left 7, and uh, he, he does uh, some great work. You always know you're a winner when other networks and other high personalities within media are always either trying to take digs at you or trying to impersonate you, and uh, that's always a good sign. That yeah, that's right. true. There are quite a few uh, people out there doing that, aren't there? Now, it's interesting. So Lee Sales, Tracy Grimshaw, Tony Jones, Bruce McAvaney, uh, your top picks in that field, that's why. Uh, now, other influential people, keeping with the sport theme, uh, the footy shows, of course, they, these are hugely watched. They are indeed, and all, all that are involved, whether you watch your NRL, whether you watch your AFL, these boys are doing amazing things with amazing uh, numbers. Audience figures uh, still continuing to be quite high. The AFL footy show probably has sort of uh, waned a little bit in its figures and its numbers, but it, it still keeps on reinventing itself. So the days of when it was Eddie Maguire uh, now have gone, the, the, the sort of the James Brayshaw and the Gary Lyon have sort of reinvented the way that they, they do the footy show, and they do a pretty good job. I mean, they don't have problems selling out their end-of-year events, uh, live show. It's fairly good entertainment. I'm getting a little tired of Sam Newman, and I know that sounds bad, and I, I think he might even still be on this network. He may or may not be. Not, I don't think so, but anyway, we'll leave but it there. But the thing is, when you, when, you, when, you, when you mention Sam Newman, you end up getting yourself in trouble. But, look, um, the, the reality is, is that uh, his humour is still for some is still appealing and uh, they still do very well. It doesn't matter if you're an AFL lover or an NRL lover, your footy shows still are very influential. Now, there are segment contributors that you find are very appealing and have real star appeal, people that uh, contribute to a lot of talk radio and talk TV. Yeah, look, I love these people, I, and particularly across the Fairfax network, whether you're listening in 4BC, 2UE, 3AW, even over here at 6PR, it doesn't really matter. These, these people are probably some of the most influential people, particularly when it comes to our health. Now, I talk about the pharmacist, uh, Gerald Quigley. Oh, yes. He is, uh, he is everywhere, and he, he really does an amazing job taking talk back, uh, relaying information that he has found out, also to delivering good advice. Uh, he, is, he is fantastic. Dr. Joe Kosterich, probably those for the 4BC listeners, uh, definitely very big over here in Western Australia on 6PR, and uh, he will probably make a bit of a play for 3AW at some point. He is an amazing uh, general practitioner, uh, gives great advice, takes on a few of the ideas and concepts that come out from the medical associations and, and challenges us to think about it. And probably the most and probably best well-known has been Dr. Ross Walker, the, the eminent cardiologist who uh, appears, I think he's even got his own program on 2UE. Uh, he's, uh, that he does popular. tell her. Yeah, that's and, right. And uh, he does, uh, does great things. And, and when you've got people of this sort of calibre being able to deliver that kind of information across a very, very large audience, they become very influential and they, they now start to help us challenge and think about what we traditionally thought of health and, and medicine and, and try and get us to, to think a little differently. And that can only be good, uh, as long as the advice is always good. But those three have always delivered beautifully. Yeah, good points there. We must leave it there, Nick. It's good to talk to you always. And uh, as a, let me tell you, as a contributor, you also are a man of influence in this community. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to get a recording of this. this is, uh, that's fantastic. I'll, uh, I'll let everyone know that. <laughs> <laughs> All the best, Nick. We'll speak in a week. Good on you, boys. Talk soon. I'm the 